never ceases to amaze me the great importance that it has for me. I remember being with Mopti and saying, oh, geez, that was terrific, you know what he said and you said and you said. This boy Mopti in Belmont, he says, Joey says, it was about half ten in the morning, I was going to court, he says, Joey says, oh, I close, he says, he says, you know what I've done this morning before I came out of the house? He said, I had to rewind you about five times, so it's like, <laughs> so like a CEO of a funny thing. And you know, he said, I mean, I get hit me, I like it maybe, I would think maybe about 200 letters a month, you know, they say things like, Joe Broly, so-called punted, or so-called barrister. <laughs> 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 you get them, I got them from clergy mail, this is true. From the Irish Dancing Association. <laughs> I kid you not. And uh, I just find it, you can't know, go all wrong. Astonishing. <laughs> I don't think I've got any responsibility at all, really, quite honestly. I mean, all I'm doing is giving a view, you know, and I mean, I, 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 you know, when New Labour came along, you know, they brought this whole wave of political correctness with them, you know, just, we were talking about it this morning, you know, there's a cafe in Bedfordshire Council that changed the name of the dessert Spotted Dick to Spotted Richard, but he thought it might, he thought it might offend the females who work there. This is absolutely true. You know, I, I genuinely, I think the political correctness is a bad thing. It breeds falseness and hypocrisy. People don't say what, what's on their mind. You know, they speak a different language. And in society, that's what we've started to get used to. You know, people do not say what they mean. What is wrong with people just telling the truth? Somebody who's useless just saves useless. <laughs> Brian, how do you handle that criticism if there ever was on, on television? Do you think sometimes that uh, TV clips go overboard? You're not talking about Colin O'Rourke now, are you? I'm not talking about anyone in particular. <laughs> <laughs> Great predictions of our time. I was saying it's part and parcel of the game now, you know, and as the game gets more into the media, obviously more people are going to talk about it. And I suppose what some people can say about pundits is they're afraid to be managers. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, know, you better believe it. They you know, you know, can sit in their comfortable seat and talk, can they? And uh, put them on the other side of it, go down on the pitch. They'll be lost. That's pretty realistic. Right. About, about some of it, you know, and uh, it's a braver person that goes and manages a team, should they club team, that any supporter that goes and talks and, you know, and go and chat about it, hang her back about it. You know, maybe not so much the pundits, but it is one of them. It's just one of the things. It's hard if people have to listen to it, and it's very hard if you listen to one of your teammates to be criticised. You know, you have a bond there with your teammates, and whenever you hear one of them being criticised, no matter what it is for some that you write, it's, it does it does affect, it does, it does, it doesn't say affect, it takes a quarter of the rest of the teammates, you know, that it probably gives them a bit more incentive to drive on. Most players won't be the first or listen to somebody again. Like, hey, I would not watch this one again whenever I'm playing football. That's just, it comes on. If the wife was in the salon, I, I go out of the room. <coughs> or I turned off. That's just, uh, I don't know if any other players are different, that's me. I would like to see some of these pundits uh, you know, reflect on their own opinions. You know, the, the, this, this retrospective vision is wonderful. You know, when you watch the video tape of the game on half time, players are pundits make predictions on how the game's going to go and they have it off to a tee, then the thing turns on his head and doesn't go out that way at all, and then they know why that happened after they've seen it. You know, <laughs> 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 and, uh, saying, I was useless there. I had a clue about what I was saying. That was the Some of them could be a bit more discreet. I mean, I agree with what Brian Dover says. You know, guys, none of us like getting getting uh, abused or criticised, and I don't like it any more than anyone else. But I take a share of it too. But at the end of the day, Joe's right. There's no point in his being there if he's not going to give an honest view. Uh, that's the reality. Do you know the guy who annoys me most on on the Sunday game? I don't. But you're going to tell us. Yeah, Mike Stay. Now tell you why. The referee never makes a mistake. There, on every penalty that was questioned about this year, the referee got it right until one, the one he gave against me. 
The first time in the entire year that the referee got a penalty decision wrong was against Mayo.